Okay, so Michael Penn recently uploaded a video on this limit, and that is quite a uh, brilliant video explaining why L'Hopital's rule wouldn't work in this case and how to evaluate this limit. It is an amazing video, but I won't agree when someone says, uh, I wouldn't agree when someone would say that this limit is too cruel for beginners in calculus, like, for example, high school students learning calculus. And even back when I was teaching high school calculus, I used to make examples like these to uh, just to make sure that students along the road do not get too comfortable with using tools like L'Hopital's rule. I mean, yes, it's useful, but I like I like them to use more basic techniques or trickery to actually get the hang of problem solving. So yes, L'Hopital's rule will not work in this case because if you differentiate upstairs, you get one and downstairs, you get one plus the cosine of x. Now you're taking, uh, you're interested in the limit as x approaches infinity. Now the cosine of x oscillates between negative and positive one. So you can't say anything definitive about its behavior as x approaches positive infinity. So yeah, L'Hopital's rule doesn't work in this case. However, you can try something else. Like you have uh, linear terms in x and a bounded trig function in sine of x. So why not just divide upstairs and downstairs by x? So that gives you the limit as x approaches uh, infinity. Sorry about that. That's a horrible attempt to draw uh, to write infinity of one by one plus sine of x by x. And this term down here is pretty easy to evaluate. I mean, sine of x is a bounded function, right? It's bound between negative and positive one. And x is a linear polynomial in x, right? So if you take the limit as x uh, approaches positive infinity, the numerator is always bound, but the denominator is actually growing and it's growing without bounds, right? It's growing without bounds, whereas the numerator is just a bounded, something that's bounded. So as the denominator gets larger and larger, you're going to get closer and closer to zero. So the limit of sine of x by x as x approaches infinity is zero. So this implies that we are now, uh, that the limit of x approaches infinity of one by one plus sine x by x is in fact one by one plus zero, which is one. Okay, so our results agree with Penn's result. So we definitely did something right. And just as an exercise, try evaluating the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus sine to the nicest power of x divided by x squared plus, oh, sorry about that, x squared plus six. So if you want to evaluate this limit without any hints, now's your chance, pause the video. But if you do need hints and you do need the answer, then notice that you have linear as well as quadratic terms in x and a bounded trig function. So the best thing to do is divide everything downstairs and upstairs by x squared and see what happens. So thank you. See you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe.